Welcome to Policy On Demand. I'm Scott McCandless. It is the week of March 4th, and this is your Monday briefing. Sindhu is at PwC's annual international tax conference, and we'll share interviews from that event later this week. Here in Washington, we're following some significant developments this week, including a climate disclosure ruling from the SEC expected on March 6th and the State of the Union address on March 7th. A government shutdown was averted last week, but only for one week. The next deadline to replenish government funding is this Friday. Joining me today to discuss this and the ongoing fiscal policy debate are Chairman Dave Camp and Carl Russo. Chairman Camp, Carl, welcome. Thanks for having me. Great to be with you both. Thanks. Chairman Kemp, perhaps we could start with you. Congressional leaders over the weekend released bill text for six FY24 appropriations bills that are set to expire this Friday. The remaining six appropriations bills are set to expire on March 22nd. Could you offer your perspective on the factors that will need to come together to address government funding and the challenges that Speaker Johnson is facing? Well, Scott, as you mentioned, uh, a portion of government funding runs out this Friday, and the six bills that were introduced represent about 30% of government funding. And because the appropriations bills were released over the weekend by the leadership, congressional leadership, it does appear as though they're on track to be voted on this week. But in the House, it will come to the floor under, and I believe the House will go first, under what's called suspension of the rules, which means they'll need two thirds vote in order to pass those bills. It's expected that they will pass, but I think what will be interesting to watch is how many Republicans vote for these bills. Is it what we used to call the Hastert rule, the majority of the majority? Will a majority of Republicans support this bill? As we've seen with continuing government funding, a majority of Republicans have voted for those bills, but more Democrats than Republicans have voted for them. And the thing that's important about that is, well, it's not, not a, a, a crisis, but it is problematic going forward uh, for the speaker if he continues to have legislation that more Democrats and Republicans support, but also uh, important to look at to see, do a majority of Republicans support these bills? Turning, if we could, to the Senate, Chairman Camp, Senate Minority Leader Mitch McConnell announced that he plans to step down as a Republican Senate leader in November. How does this news affect current and perhaps even in the nearer term legislative work? Well, I have great respect for Senator McConnell and obviously saw him his strategic brilliance up close when I was in Congress. Uh, this won't happen until November. So he remains Senate leader uh, really through the certainly through the campaign. Uh, but I think what could happen and I, I don't think this really has a whole lot of uh, effect on how government funding goes forward, because most of the issues with government funding have been in the House and uh, how does the House pass legislation? But I, I do think going forward that the campaign to replace him, which starts immediately and is go ongoing, frankly, right now, could become problematic uh, as, as more candidates get in the race and the challenges that they face as they try to seek votes within that caucus. But I think at least in terms of immediate funding through the end of this month, I, I don't see it having a significant uh, impact on that. But uh, certainly his leadership uh, after November as a Senate Majority Leader, not only the longest serving uh, Senate leader uh, in the past, uh, he's minority leader now, but uh, really will be missed, I think, going forward. Carl, if we could turn to you and look at some economic data, the Personal Consumption Expenditures Price Index has had a notable change. Talk a little bit about what that is. Certainly. So the uh, Personal Consumption Expenditure Index, which is uh, sometimes referred to as PC, is the rate that the Fed targets for in terms of watching inflation. And the latest report showed that it had increased at the slowest pace in almost three years um, and was up uh, about 2.4%. And um, if you exclude the volatile food and energy components, up 2.8%. And that really is great progress from where we peaked in uh, June of 22, uh, more than 7% increase in that rate. So we do see the slowing of inflation, uh, which has been what the Fed has been at hoping to achieve with its uh, significant rate increases over the last uh, couple of years. Uh, and that progress, I think, bodes well for uh, where we might be headed in terms of uh, inflation and uh, economic growth and whether the Fed can maybe back up a little bit on its uh, aggressive uh, interest rate policy. And what do you think this might mean for the fiscal policy debates, either the ones going on currently with regard to appropriations or perhaps a little longer term with some of the politics ahead of us? 
Yeah, well, certainly uh, I think the Fed is expected to keep rates higher a little bit longer maybe than people thought already. We've been a little bit higher for longer. And so that has put a little bit more pressure on some of the economic activity, uh, whether we see some slowing there. And that just makes the debate about fiscal policy harder, because if the economy is growing smaller, then the deficits are going to look bigger. And um, the uh, but also the need for potential uh, stimulus as a result of some of the easing of that fiscal policy. You know, we don't want to have a big, uh, you know, tax increase maybe in 2026 that would further slow economic growth. Uh, so I think uh, you'll see a little bit of pressure there. And also, uh, if the Fed needs to keep interest rates higher for longer, then that's going to mean that interest costs to the federal government are going to be higher for longer. And that's going to complicate the debt and deficit picture going into the tax negotiations in the next couple of years. Carl, Chair McCamp, thank you very much for your insights and for being with us. Appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you. Great to be with you. And for our viewers, there are links to other episodes in the description of this episode. And there's more to come on the State of the Union Address, the SEC's ruling, and coverage from this year's International Tax Conference. Thanks for spending this time with us, and take care.